Before I say anything else, I want to say no matter what you've done, you deserve respect. Even if you make mistakes, you're lovable. And it doesn't matter your look skills or age or size or anything, you're worthwhile. Let's get you up to speed. Caleb McGilvery, known as Kai the Hitchhiker. So Kai was hitchhiking on the 2nd of February 2013 and he got picked up while traveling through Frenzo, California by a man named Jet Simmons McBride. They smoked a joint together. While driving, Jet McBride decided to have a conversation about his personal life and made the mistake of telling Kai that he took advantage of and raped a 14 year old girl while on a business trip. He went on to have a breakdown about things he had done, then stated the following. I've come to realize that I'm Jesus Christ and I can do anything I fucking want to. After saying this, Jet McBride swerved the car hitting a parked truck and also hitting a Frenzo County utility worker. After the car has stopped, Kai and some bystanders immediately went to help the utility worker. Jet McBride didn't like this and started grabbing it and harassing rescuers just trying to help. After this, Kai pulls out a hatchet and hits Jet McBride three times with the blunt side, hard enough to neutralize him. After these strikes, Jet McBride continued harassing rescuers. Shortly after all of this was reported by bystanders that Jet McBride was at one point on the side of the road masturbating, so this guy is losing it. Police arrive. Jet McBride goes into custody. Kai was let free and everybody thought he was a hero. In court, Jet McBride pleads for insanity and admits he wanted to hit the truck and the Frenzo worker. He was found not guilty for the most serious crime, attempted murder, so they sent him to a psychiatric unit. So Kai went on to have a little bit of success. He was on Jimmy Kimmel at one point and was so recognisable on the streets that fans or just people he knew were letting them crash at their place. That's how I knew the story. Then I remember years ago Kai got found guilty for murder and I kind of just dismissed it thinking, oh well he lost it. Well, he didn't. I was going through my usual playlist of watching interesting and depressing stuff and I came across Wavy Web Surf's What Happened to Kai video. And after getting halfway through it I learned of a story that I hadn't been exposed to. So full credits to Wavy Web Surf for exposing me to information that myself or you may have not bothered to check out for whatever reason. On May 11th 2013, three months after Kai's interview, Kai was approached at Times Square by a man named Joseph Gelfi. Joseph Gelfi was well recognised in the New Jersey area and a partner at a local law firm. Joseph offers Kai a place to stay and this is when things start to get weird. The first night Kai stayed at Joseph's and they both ate food and drank alcohol. Kai felt extremely tired suddenly after consuming it and went to go sleep in the bed offered to him. He awoke the next day and had slimy stuff on his face and he just put that down to him drooling in his sleep or whatever. So he waits for a friend to pick him up and the friend conveniently doesn't show up. So Joseph Gelfie offers to have Kai again for another night. So after drinking and eating in the evening, Kai experiences the same sudden feeling of sleepiness and goes back to his bedroom. This time he wakes up later in the evening with Joseph Gelfi on top of him. Kai was being raped. At this point Kai fights him off only using his hands and feet and then gets out of there quickly. Kai retreats to a diner and begins to understand the reality of what happened. The drool on his face was not drool. Kai went onto Facebook and described the incident I've mentioned in greater detail. We later find out Joseph Gelfie didn't survive being fought off by Kai and was dead in his underwear on the floor. Text messages between Joseph and Kai were found so an arrest warrant was put on Kai. He was taken into custody and found guilty. It's been seven years. Kai got sentenced to 57 years in jail and still has 50 to go. 
This is Wavy Web Surf's interview with Kai in 2018, where Kai gives his views about what happened in order to help understand how he landed in this situation. Anyways, guys, without any further ado, here's a special message from Kai to the people of YouTube. Check it out. You're the type of people who want to know the truth. You have more in common with me than you realized before now. You've probably thought before this that some who are in positions of power have abused their power to prey on vulnerable people in society. You've probably even realized they form groups to cover for each other and get away with things. So how would you feel if, after a lawyer drugs and rapes you, and you fight him off while under the influence of aid rape drugs, he dies from his injuries? Then you're arrested by the head prosecutor, who's friends with the rapist, and brought before a judge whose boss, the head judge, was the rapist's former law partner. They make fun of you instead of taking you for a drug analysis or rape kit. And they let the rapist's brother, the chief of police, into an active crime scene where evidence is destroyed by the investigators. The dishwasher got run in an active crime scene, destroying evidence of drugs in drink glasses before they were even told that the rapist had slipped drugs into a drink glass. Hmm. So at least one of the investigators knew how the rapist Galfi was drugging hitchhikers not to mention knowing he was doing it in the first place. They destroyed the carpet the rape happened on. They destroyed video of me cutting my hair before going to the rapist. They even brought beer bottles from the house to the crime lab two months later to rinse out any drug residue. That's known as framing someone. Me to be exact. And they must have thought, this dumb hippie hitchhiker is too stupid and isolated to do anything about it. For you and me, friends, we also got in common that I'm not stupid. I took one look at the crime scene photos showing the evidence they destroyed, a double take at their brazen admissions in their police reports, and I was like, hell the fuck no. I posted them on Facebook. I filed federal lawsuits. I went to the press, because this isn't the golden age of raping hitchhikers and sweeping it under the rug anymore. This is the age of Twitter and exposing creeps to do shit like this. They're trying to say you can't defend yourself against rape anymore. The law says you can, and so can I. So if you don't fight them, they'll take that away from us. So here I am, exposing these creeps for not only myself and you, but for our families and the next generation of innocent travelers. But I'm just one man, and I need your help. Without your presence, without your voice calling them out on their corruption, they'll steamroll over the underdog like they've done to hundreds, if not thousands, of poor travelers before me. So I think if you spread the truth online, if you help me expose them, together we can make a change. But hey, what do I know? I'm only a man. Kai insists that he was set up from the beginning and has since made the following claims. Hey, how you doing? Steven. Pleasure to meet you. Steven. And this is Kai today. His appearance is much different. Notice the elaborate tattoo on the side of his face. All right. My name is Kai. K-A-I, straight out of Dogtown. This interview is taking place in prison. He's a convicted killer, and this is the first time he's speaking out since his conviction. This situation is hell. How did he end up here? Three months after he appeared on Jimmy Kimmel, Kai hitchhiked across the country and wound up in New York's Times Square, where he met 74-year-old lawyer Joseph Galfi. How did you meet this man, Joseph Galfi? He walked up to me and said, hey, you look lost. Where are you headed? I told him I'm, I'm going over to Jersey, and uh, um, he gave me a ride over to his place. He took the man up on his offer and spent two nights at his home. When he claims up, he was drugged and then and sexually assaulted. Then he said he fought back in self-defense. I sat when I punched him in the face, and he was over top of me, and he shoved me into the bed. And I was trying to get him away from me. I couldn't get him away from me. Kai fled to Philadelphia, where he was apprehended four days later. After the beating, did you realize how badly he was injured? No. You just th thought I had to get out of there. I, I, just, I just had to get out of there. When I, when I woke up and he was over top of me, I panicked. Did you know he was dead? I didn't know that he was dead. This man's ear was almost ripped off. His neck was fractured. His face was fractured. The ear injury came from one horizontal kick from on my back. That ought to tell you I was on my back on the floor. But the jury didn't believe he acted in self-defense. If this was self-defense, why didn't you call the police right then and there? I'm an illegal immigrant. 
They're on, they, they, they aren't going to investigate. Kai still insists he's innocent and says critical evidence that could have proved he was drugged was ignored and destroyed. He's filing an appeal. In this case, the judge told the jury that the burden was on me to prove intoxication and therefore self-defense and therefore my innocence. Who's the real you, right? Is it is it Kai the hitchhiker who we saw in this video, the guy who saved the day, the guy who came to the rescue, or is it Kai the murderer? Who's the real you? De definitely never Kai the murderer. I've never murdered anyone. If what Kai is saying is in fact true, then the truth will come out sooner or later. And if Kai is lying, all you can do is pay respects to those negatively affected. As for the serious wounds Kai claims he didn't inflict upon Joseph Gelfi, it's not a far stretch to say the body was tampered with given the context of the situation and the people involved. I don't mean to disrespect anyone, I just want to try to understand a clear motive. Kai was called a cunning and manipulative cold-blooded killer in court. I don't think that's fair at all. For days leading up to this event, Kai was gaining enough hype and attention through his viral video that people in the streets would recognise him and have him stay out of YouTube celebrity status. A manipulative person would have robbed houses or something malicious. Instead Kai was sexually assaulted and tried to just act like nothing really happened because it's sadly something Kai experienced earlier in his life according to him. I'll leave you with one more thing. Joseph Gelfi had a heart condition. Considering the events described by Kai, it's not hard to put that into the question. To me, this whole thing, in 57 years for one person, accidentally, it just doesn't sit well. So here's a small update of how Kai has been doing. Kai's most recent communication was on the 27th of June through his legal support page. His fans comment on his posts and it's good to see some online supporters there for him, as in the eyes of the court Kai is guilty. This is Kai's most important recent post, highlighting that after working on it for 10 months and over 1000 hours, an appeal has been filed. In this case, Kai accuses head criminal judge Robert Mega of being seen at the crime scene where evidence was destroyed. Robert Mega lied about his presence at the crime scene, saying he wasn't there. To summarise what Kai's intentions are, he says, the plan going forward is this, if I win my appeal, I'm going to represent myself at my new trial. If I lose this appeal, I'll file for post-conviction relief and call Mega Caulfield Kirsch and the medical examiner as witnesses at an evidentiary hearing. I'll be representing myself so I can ask whatever questions I want to. I can guarantee that after I impeach them, many hundreds of convictions will be up for review. I hope you found this video informative. I hope justice takes its course correctly. Sub if you want other content from me, and thank you.